bringing uh, an SAS veteran who suffered from PTSD, Bob Paxman. Good morning, Bob. Good morning to you. You've been listening to what Neil's had to say. Tell me, first of all, um, what happened to you? I mean, you're, you're off operating in an elite force there. How does that affect you? What you see, what you witness, what you have to do when you get home? Well, I was, I was exposed to um, a range of hostile environments over a number, uh, number of years, plus um, working in security industry as well. Uh, but over a period of time, um, you know, these things build up, and certainly I, I had a diagnosis of PTSD some, some eight years ago. Um, and uh, as a charity, we've taken a completely different approach to the treatment of PTSD and other severe stress-related conditions by focusing on everything that's not the trauma. So it's a, it's a, non, it's a non-medical model, and it's not trauma-focused. And, and because of that, we're getting fantastic results with, uh, if you like, the most complex of cases, the re- revolving door clients that uh, other systems haven't been able to fix. Bob's got an organisation called Talking to Minds. I'll give you again details of that at, at the end of our conversation. Tell, tell me how your PTSD manifested itself, Bob, but you know, when you're at home with your family, how were you different to how you were before you went away? Well, it, it took me a number of years to actually, um, and if you like, take myself out of uh, uh, the biggest river in Egypt, denial. Um, I was totally unaware that my behaviour um, was detrimental to myself and those around me. Um, I was having nightmares, flashbacks, um, hypervigilance, um, severe aggression, Massively self-medicating on uh, drugs and alcohol, um, and it was just uh, it was just devastating to all of those around me. And um, you know, to be quite honest, there's some there's some guys running around at the moment that's uh, potentially quite dangerous because they they're, they're still in, they're, their thoughts are still in in other environments. Do, do, I, I can't quite get my head around that the fact that you can come home from service and then you know pretty much get on a train or drive home. And that's it. You're left to deal with everything yourself. Is that actually how it plays out? Well, it pretty much is. It's, uh, I know the military now are, are you know, taking measures with uh, their trauma resistance and management procedures to identify those who are you know, likely to be at risk. Um, but the, the, the therapies that they're using, EMDR, CBT, psychotherapy and counselling, are not hitting the root cause of the problem. So it may give some temporary relief for some people, but it's not actually dealing with the problem at root cause. And as I say, we're working with the most complex cases, and we're, we've got a, a, an awesome evidence base around this, and we're uh, hoping that uh, some of the larger organisations are actually going to engage with us. OK. Um, so, I mean, people who've returned from Iraq and Afghanistan over the last few years, are these the sort of people that you're talking about now who have PTSD and aren't being counselled for it? Yeah, there's, there's certainly a whole um, a range of people. It's not just the military that we deal with, it's Blue Light Services and civilians as well. But we've got guys going back, um, you know, case studies going back as far as uh, people that are sort of 87 years old that have been having, they've been accepting um, and taking different forms of treatment over the years um, and have, been, uh, have not found the positive outcome that they've been looking for. And those are exactly the type of people that we're looking at. Just, just a thought here, here Bob, and, you know, and, and don't take this in the wrong way. In about 20 minutes' time, uh, we're going to hear from our reporter in Australia about Claude Chules, who's the 110-year-old First World War vet. He, he served in that conflict. He served in the Second World War. And Claude uh, lived... A, a very long life and, and wrote his memoirs a couple of years back when he was into his hundreds. Um, he wouldn't have had any counselling for uh, PTSD or, or anything else like that. So how did someone like him get through that and, and get to 110? Well, certainly one man's nightmare is another man's playground. And um, what you see and experience um, in your neurology uh, has a different effect on, on, on different people. Um, there's certainly lots of, lots of cases. Um, uh, Sassoon is one of them who's, you know, the, the, you know obviously a famous author, um, who has experienced PTSD. It's not everybody that experiences whatever PTSD is, the, the nightmares, the flashbacks, the aggression, you know, the, the, you know, all of the rest of the symptomology. People are affected in different ways. What about the general public? Do, when, when you speak to people who aren't in the military, do they understand uh, the symptoms? The, that, do, they, do they question the lack of help that is offered at the time you leave the service? Well, to, well, to, to a certain extent, some people do, but it's, it's whether it, that's within their range of awareness of what's going on. Um, if, you know, if, 
Yeah, um, certain people certain people are aware of things, and it's fantastic that the awareness is being being raised around this. Certainly, uh, we coined the phrase PTSD by proxy some three years ago, and it's fantastic now that uh, other organisations are now taking that on and working with that, um, because the family members, in support of you know, the, the, if you like, the client who's suffering from the symptomology is going to b develop coping mechanisms. Now, what we've found is once you've been working with the client and the client no longer has that severe stress-related condition and writes themselves off the books and says that they're now, they're now well, they're now fixed, uh, on occasions the, the family members may be running by proxy the same coping mechanism. So we, we then go in and we work around those to uh, relieve, relieve that symptomology that's running by proxy. And, and how are you now, Bob? You know, after your SAS service and, and the time you spoke about when things were pretty desperate for you, are you now in a place where you're fairly consistent or if you have bad days, you have coping mechanisms and you understand what's going on within yourself? Well, the coping mechanism would suggest that there's still something going on. Certainly from our experience, and we've got um, we've had well over 300 people through our books now that are fixed, and we've got case studies, case studies and statistical analysis around about 150 people, um, when you're fixed, you're fixed, and you'll know that inside. Anybody can have a bad day, but you can, you know, the average person on the street can have a bad day going to, you know, going to the shops. Um, it's a definition of a bad day. Do you still have the nightmares and flashbacks? No, they don't. You know, I've, I, I went through my uh, original course um, about six years ago. Uh, completely turned my life around. Um, I, I went on to train in uh, what we do now. Uh, which is an amalgam of uh, amalgam of um, results focused therapies uh, and, and now things are you know, totally perfect for me um, and, and i'd say with um, the guys that come through our program they, they're getting their lives back on track and so are their families okay details of your organization come up in a second neil thank you both very much indeed for your, your time today and your experiences neil cox and bob paxman thank you very much thank you thank you for talking to us so the and if you want to get in touch with bob paxman to find out more about the work he does with veterans suffering from ptsd his website is www.talkingtominds.co.uk and the two in there is the figure two so talking to minds.co.uk